right, guys, real quick. Uh, Okay, so right here amongst this chard, I have stuck in a uh, porterhouse uh, tomato. This is a hybrid that will supposedly grow a three to four pound tomato. If you can see that guy. Uh, this chard, mm, a lot of it will be coming out. I actually <laughs> uh, accidentally got a potato stuck over here in my, uh, actually a couple of potatoes stuck over here in this row of chard. Uh, about a 20 foot row. Chard isn't my favorite thing in the world and quite frankly I thought they were beets. I was hoping they were beets. They, uh, I, I had spilled some seed several years ago and didn't label the bag. So don't be like me. I am the world's worst about labeling things. But my potatoes are doing well. Onions are actually doing a lot better than I thought they would. Uh, still not gonna, you know, I don't expect giant onions out of these. But we'll see. Um, I do have some peppers in here. The, these guys are struggling. As you can see, they just don't look all that great. And that's because we got to, well, uh, about a week and a half ago, we were flirting with the 80s. Uh, we were flirting with the 90s. We were up to about 87, I think was the high. And then the bottom fell out and it got really really cool again and we ended up getting another frost early last week um some places actually you know out outlying uh areas of, of the dfw metroplex um ended up losing a lot of the stuff that they already had in ground i however live on a hill and i am in the dead middle of the city so a lot of things you know, I didn't lose anything, but eh, a few things got damaged. As you can see, that's an okra. These are all okras. And I planted these the week that we were flirting with the 90s, thinking, oh, okay, spring's over with, here comes summer, which is typically how things go in North Texas. But just didn't really work out that way. So I've popped this pepper out of out of the ground as you can see it's just it's not happy for whatever reason does have a pretty decent uh, root system so it was probably about to take off but I just I want to put something a little healthier in there so I've got this guy this is a dadle and dadles have become one of my favorite peppers uh, since last year I planted some uh, I got the seeds from a lady in Florida uh, and you know if you ask the Floridian they'll probably tell you that these peppers will only grow in Florida which is not true but anyway let's uh let's just pop this guy in ground all right so this soil is actually pretty rich uh, I've been composting here for many many years uh, probably I don't know I think going on about six years now since I started working on this particular area of the garden. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get some citrus tone. And this is just to demonstrate that just because something says citrus or just because something says tomato or just because something says this or that doesn't mean you can't use it for other things. It just means that it's formulated more for what someone thinks is a good uh, NPK ratio of, uh, of uh, uh, fertilizer for whatever they've got on the bag. So citrus... Uh, apparently, Espoma feels like uh, 5 to 6 is a great um, ratio of, of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's uh, percentage by weight. So 5% nitrogen, 2% uh, uh, phosphorus, and 6% potassium. So I'm going to use just a sprinkle. That's a little more than a half a tablespoon end of the hole. I've also got some Dr. Earth. This is a 463. This is for tomatoes and vegetable and herbs, whatever. Throw a little bit of that in there. Uh, this actually has a lot of the bacterial uh, life that you want in your soil as well. I generally just assume that it's there, but we're going to see, because none of these other peppers got, got any of this treatment. Uh, basically, that's to I just wanted to see if if my soil was rich enough for these things to grow and as you can tell by this guy probably missing something 
but that's also probably just in uh, the the climate uh, the last couple of weeks like I said it has been pretty cold we've still had very cool nights you want to mix those those fertilizers in uh, if you've got wood chips on your garden like I actually do in some places but this th this bed is actually kind of finally got rid of the uh, wood chips except for uh, is that wood chip yeah that's that's definitely wood don't want that in your soil you can have it on your soil but you definitely don't want it in it so to pop this in make sure you tease those roots out because that that was very root bound uh, so now just gonna stick that guy in the ground cover him in probably won't even water this guy I'm just gonna make sure he's in there snug that guy's snug as a bug and he's gonna take off I want a lot of those peppers because I intend to use them for um, a spice rub that I'm gonna make uh, coming up real soon while I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and dig out this nut sage. This stuff has become the bane of my existence with the, well, uh, that and the uh, Bermuda grass that I'm dealing with on a constant basis. That's the Bermuda grass. This is also Bermuda grass. Just, this stuff is combative. It's not even invasive, it, it is combative. It's not aggressive. It is combative. This is this is the Ike uh, of Ike and Tina Turner to to your garden. So yeah, just stay on top of it. Whip its ass when you can. And uh, yeah. All right. So I guess I'll uh, try and stick this guy, the one that I dug up out of that other bed. I'll stick him right here and see if maybe he'll do anything. Uh, I hate to kill him off. I, I'm, I'm such a softie about my damn plants. Uh, I feel like if they germinate, they deserve a chance. Um, so a lot of people end up with volunteer tomatoes or volunteer peppers, volunteer uh, cucumbers. I end up with volunteer peach trees yeah so that's what you're looking at there there's a third one right there uh, there are also several in amongst these um, uh, daikon radish uh, cover crop okay so there's one right here uh, there is another right here and I will be removing these and planting them uh, just you know probably in containers to start with and then I'll see what kind of varieties I can get uh, to graft to them so I'm not gonna do this on camera well I'll go ahead and do this one if I can get it uh, with this hand trial let's, let's set you guys down I'll see if I can get in here with the hand trial and get that out uh. So, that's going to come with quite a bit of Bermuda grass as well, but I'll shake that all off. I'll throw the Bermuda grass out, and that's a decent, decent root. That'll take, take off just fine after I get in some, uh, some soil. Let's go ahead and get this other one out real quick. Uh, so, these will just be grown in... Uh, in some small containers for probably a year to to get them young and they don't really have super developed uh, root systems so those will be just fine kind of want to go ahead and get that Bermuda grass out of there uh, because it is a pain yeah so anytime I've got a spade in the ground I want to get as much weeds out of there as possible yeah, boom, get that guy out of there. I hate this crap with a bloody passion. But that uh, that cover crop's looking really, really good. Y'all looking at that? Y'all getting that? Look how, I mean, the flowers are beautiful. Some of them have even made really, 
really nice roots. Let's let's get a look in here. Uh, let's see this guy right here. That's that's a pretty decent decent little root. Uh, that guy. Nah. Let's. I know I left some. Oh, there we go. That guy right there. Let's go ahead and pull that. That is not bad. A lot of people, you know, they say that's a, that's just a, a cover crop. That's not a cover crop. That's edible. You can eat that. I'd eat it right now, but I don't like having grit in my teeth, so I need to definitely give it a rinse. Uh, I'll leave it there for now. Some other good-sized ones. These are really, really turning out well. They've served their purpose. I put these here to prevent erosion, to enrich the soil to build the microbial life back up uh, through photosynthesis, the, the plants pumping carbon back into the soil and feeding the, uh, the organisms beneath the ground. And they have done that and then some. This guy right here is, at, I hate to pull it because it hasn't flowered yet. I think I'm gonna leave that guy because I want to harvest some seeds and see what happens. This over here was planted quite a bit more dense, so these roots are, you know, pretty pretty pathetic. Uh, so these are going to go directly into the compost. Got some cabbages that overwintered. Uh, these actually didn't even get any protection during our big storm, and they're still growing. I'm not experiencing much pest pressure that I can tell. There's no aphids there, no cabbage loopers yet. So I'm just going to let them do their thing until. Uh, uh, yeah, you kind of kind of can't really see. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. It's amazing what a little shade will do, huh? Anyway, got some bolting spinach. That's fine. It's That's the time. It's giving me plenty of harvest. Uh, lettuces that are still doing great. These are some other, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Some kind of like radicchio or something. Uh, that's really kind of insignificant this bed under this 50% reflective shade cloth still doing very well I'm loving it the lettuces are loving it you can see I mean come on guys that makes some really beautiful salads got some butter crunch over here I believe that's what that is I haven't even harvested any of this yet, uh, and only because this uh, the shade cost in the way. You know, I just haven't got out here to, to mess with it. But I will shortly. We still got a lot of salad in the house that I've uh, harvested. And uh, let's come over here real quick. I've got my uh, cattle panel uh, trellis here for for now. It's got my peas on it, but I've also got some cucumbers planted at the base. Uh, they'll be taken off here pretty soon. I've got room for other cucumbers here. I've got wasps all over the place. More bolting spinach. Look at that guy. That guy is like no respect for personal space. Dude, go away. Go eat something. Go be beneficial. Everybody says you're beneficial. Go be beneficial. Do something. Cook, clean, flip a mattress, change a light bulb, shot it, do something. Uh, so as you can see, this whole bed is just really, I'm going to use a word that I don't really know what it means. Hodgepodge. I don't know what that means. I think, I think this is hodgepodge. Not positive. Don't quote me on that. Got lots more spinach. This is ginormous spinach. These are huge leaves. So those are definitely going to be for cooking. Uh, it's starting to bolt a little bit. Got nasturtium in here strawberries this is pretty in rose strawberry never seen I, I planted that just because I, I saw them and saw the flowers were uh, something other than white and decided that I needed it in my garden uh, this is another strawberry this is seascape tried one of those yesterday tasted delicious very sweet a couple other seascapes in there my purple Cherokees, I've got about, I think, eight purple Cherokees planted in here, along with maybe two sweet 100s, which is what this is. Um, 
all of these will be tied up to the top of, of this cattle pedal, uh, pedal trellis and then I've got some clips that will clip to the string and around the uh, stem of the tomatoes. That's how I'm going to trellis them this year. I've not tried that method yet. I tried doing the cattle panels on T-posts running long ways. Did that last year. Was not pleased. It's a lot of work. Um, and that's mainly because I planted like 30 different tomato plants. Not different varieties, but different, just 30 plants in, in general. I've also got some beets in here that I sowed from, I got these seeds from Johnny's. Uh, they were from 2019 season. I just popped in some where I could just to see uh, if I can actually grow beets in some decent, decent soil. Uh, got some flowers that are, well, these are going to be flowers. I think that's bee balm. Don't quote me. Uh, this is another strawberry. This is pretty in pink. The other is put pretty in rose. Damn. Got some leeks in here. Spare carrot. Still got uh, cilantro that are getting ready to bolt. They they just they kind of started to bolt last week when we were, uh, you know, flirting with the 90s, and uh, they just kind of stalled. And they're like, oh, okay, we can we can deal with this 40 degree temperature again. Um, these are about the only two, um, garlic that actually did anything for me this year. I always get garlic in late. It's like, for whatever reason, it's like an afterthought and I don't want it to be that way. I need to be more vigilant when getting in my garlic. I also had a couple that popped up over here, but I mowed over them yesterday by mistake. Also, my, um... Comfrey both got mowed down and added to the compost, but these will come back very, very soon. Uh, now, over here, oh, these are jackfruit seedlings. Jackfruit has actually become one of my favorite fruits. Uh, don't leave it in your refrigerator open, don't leave it in your refrigerator, period. Uh, eat it all or throw it away because it makes it stink. Uh, got lots of cosmos here. Uh, that, I don't know. I think that may be, uh, foxglove. But everybody keeps telling me that these are all borage. And I did not expect borage to be that big. And it looks very similar to what Google is telling me is foxglove. So, I don't know. Not sure what this is. I, I, I seeded this entire bed with a lot of flowers. So I've never really been much of a flower grower, uh, but I wanted to get some things in for the pollinators this year. So definitely a first for me. This is my Minuteman Hosta. It's actually doing a lot better than I've had uh, Hostas do before, but that's because the chickens like to come in and eat them. And my neighbors like to free range their chickens all over the neighborhood. So we'll see how this flower bed does and pretty much everything else is food. Uh, but yeah, just a quick walk through. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, like and subscribe, follow along. Maybe I'll be able to get that, uh, that, uh, pesticide video, organic pest control video up really, really soon. See, uh, home save, uh, snow peas seed. Well, the seed was, was home saved. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'll get to work on that, uh, on that organic pest control uh, video soon and uh yeah you guys like and subscribe i'd appreciate it have a great day and grow your health that's all i got to say grow your health okay so i dug up a couple more of the uh the peach seedlings these are about to get watered in these are in some uh some fox farm uh, ocean forest uh this guy i dug up a couple of weeks ago and he's doing just fine. Um, the other, the other two that I actually dug up on on camera are inside in some hydroponic nutrients. So, um, and that's not a big deal because it will be several, several years before these are even thinking about putting on any kind of fruit. Uh, but these are going to end up being rootstock, uh, and I'll see what all I can graft to them. So, take care.